A teenager wanted for shooting and killing two Wiley ISD students in Garland was apprehended in Mexico. A U.S. Marshals Task Force found him just across the border. He's now in custody in South Texas, ready to face capital murder charges. Fox 4's Amelia Jones is live in Garland with the update. Amelia. Heather Garland police say it's rare for a judge to sign off on sharing a juvenile's information. In this case, police believe sharing the 16 year old suspect's face and name with the public helped authorities find him and take him into custody. After almost two weeks on the run, 16 year old Amancio Anton Noriz is in custody. Garland police say on the afternoon of January 14th, Noriz allegedly shot and killed 17-year-old Ruben Santabanez Arzola and 18-year-old Alan Jesus Chavez. Surveillance video from West Buckingham Road shows Noriz meeting with the victims. Police say a fight started and Noriz shot them. Police say the victims and Noriz knew each other. They believe the three were engaged in high-risk activity, but wouldn't say what that activity was. Noriz was on the run until the U.S. Marshals found him in Mexico. Now he's in custody in Laredo. As of last night, we were made aware from Laredo that he was in custody. So right now we're working on the actual uh, transfer from Laredo, Texas to Garland so we can bring in the proceedings in the court systems here. The seriousness of the crime prompted a judge to sign off to release the 16-year-old's name and photo to the public. Police believe this helped lead to his arrest. It's one of those things that we, we don't want to resort to having to chase down juveniles, but when we have a juvenile such as this one who poses such a risk and a danger to the public, we're glad we have the system on our side. This case is similar to another Garland murder investigation. Two years ago, a judge signed off to release 14-year-old Abel Acosta's name and photo after he allegedly shot and killed three teenagers at a Texaco. Acosta is still on the run, and police believe he's in Mexico. This investigation is very similar uh, in the aspect that we have a juvenile who killed two people and was on the run and ended up in Mexico. The difference is that we're able to locate his whereabouts and ultimately get him into custody. Garland police consider the arrest a success, especially since it happened less than two weeks after the fatal shooting. It not only gives us a stamp of completion on the arrest and getting this dangerous person off the street, but also for the family's sake of the victims, it can bring some closure. Norris is charged with capital murder and he's currently being held at the Webb County Juvenile Detention Center in Laredo. Right now, there's no timeline on when he'll be back to Garland. Also, police urge anyone with information about Abel Acosta's whereabouts to come forward. Arlington police are still looking for the person responsible for shooting and killing three people in an apartment complex last night. Police say young children witnessed the shooting. Fox Force Peyton Yeager live with our story tonight. Peyton. Stephen Arlington police, they were back out at that apartment complex this afternoon talking to neighbors and hopefully locating surveillance video. Right now, police, they're only releasing a vague description. They say witnesses told them a man dressed in all black was seen running from the scene. I've been over here three years and never had any issues ever, not once, so it's really, it's really scary. It was eerily quiet Friday afternoon when Kiana Walker took her dog outside, but less than 24 hours ago, she says outside her apartment was chaos, quickly learning a triple murder took place just feet away. We saw all the lights and then we just saw cops, flashlights going by our window. Just after 8.30 p.m. Thursday, Arlington police were called out to an apartment complex near Matlock Road in Arbrook Boulevard. A 29 year old man was found shot and killed outside an apartment where the door was kicked in. Once officers entered the apartment, they discovered the couple who lived there, a 31 year old man and a 29 year old woman, had also been shot. The couple died from their injuries. The woman's two children were also in the apartment. They were not hurt, but police say they likely witnessed the violence. Police believe the suspect forced his way in. We believe that the incident occurred due to high risk drug activity. Police didn't elaborate on a possible motive, only saying evidence found on scene leads them to believe the triple murder is drug related. In a press conference Friday afternoon, the Arlington Police Department says the couple living at the apartment likely knew the killer. It was callous, it was heinous, and it was ruthless. 
Police did confirm the 29 year old man lying outside the apartment was an acquaintance visiting the couple. He's a mobile barber. Family members tell Fox 4 the 29 year old is Shannon Jones. His mother says the man living at the complex was one of Shannon's clients. Shannon leaves behind a five year old son and a one month old baby girl. He had an appointment. The guy had an appointment. So Shannon goes to cut his hair. And in the midst of that, something was going on and he was leaving. But I, I can't confirm that because, like I said, I wasn't there. Hope they have some time to reflect on what they did and what they took from us. Now, the two children who were in the apartment, again, they are safe tonight. Police released them to other family members. And the identities of the man and the woman who were killed inside the apartment, they have not been released yet. That will come from police or the Tarrant County Medical Examiner. Businesses were sprayed with bullets, and an innocent man was one of two people murdered late last year when four men jumped out of a car and opened fire at a Pleasant Grove strip center. One of the victims was the intended target. Fox 4 Sean Rabb has the images of the four shooters in this week's trackdown. We're in a strip center at 9595 Sain and South St. Augustine, December 27th. Listen to this, 9.15 in the morning, a double murder here in this strip mall. This is Detective Fernando Silva, Dallas Homicide. Detective, who were your victims? So my two victims were Jamarcus Irving and Moreland Smith. Moreland had actually just walked up. He was going to get some donuts um, here from this coffee shop. So sees Jamarcus. They know each other. They start having a, a, just a brief conversation. And then what happened? So at that point, a red Nissan Sentra comes up southbound on St. Augustine, pulls into the parking lot here. Four suspects jump out of the car, all four of them armed. They start targeting Jamarcus. And in the middle of the gunfire, Moreland is, you know, just real close by to Jamarcus. So they both get struck with gunfire. So he's an innocent victim. In, in, from all accounts, innocent bystander um, was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. All four of the suspects get back into the vehicle, the red Nissan Sentra, and they take off outside of this exit, just out, just on the other side of this blue pickup truck, and they take off going westbound on Syene Road. But somebody knows what happened up here, right? Yeah, so somebody knows. The, the, the clothing, the height and weight, you know, the, the these guys, they look like they're late teens, early 20s. Um, their shoes might even be a giveaway. The, the shoes, the clothing, um, what, three of them were wearing dark clothing, and then uh, one of the ones that's wearing dark clothing has got a very distinct uh, black hoodie sweatshirt with some stars on, on the shoulders and um, some lettering on, on the front part, but it's black and white. The other one, the fourth one, is wearing all gray, and that's the one with the uh, the, the Draco style, uh, AK-47 style machine gun. There was no regard for, for anyone in these businesses, and it was early in the morning, so some of these businesses were open, some of them were not, uh, but as you can see from, from the plywood that's put up there, there's a lot of gunfire that went into the businesses, so just if you heard anything, please reach out to me. How you so? Can, you can reach out to me at 214-671-3605 uh, or at my email address. This is Fernando.Silva at DallasPolice.gov. Who are these bad actors? Get at Detective Fernando Silva on his phone, at his email. Help find the men who carried out this double murder here in Pleasant Grove. Dallas police say a hit and run suspect lied to police about the crash he caused. They say 26 year old Billy Williamson claimed he was carjacked. The crash killed 42 year old Maria Guerrero. Her family tells us she was on her way home from work and less than half a mile away from home when she was killed. Fox Force Peyton Yeager live at the Dallas County Jail where the suspect is being held tonight. Peyton. Clarice and that suspect was arrested hours after the crash yesterday when police say he called 911 himself. But instead of reporting the crash, he came up with a story, a false story, that he was carjacked and robbed at gunpoint. It was at this Pleasant Grove gas station where Dallas police say 26 year old Billy Williamson lied to officers Wednesday morning, claiming he was held at gunpoint and carjacked. According to an arrest warrant affidavit Fox 4 obtained on Thursday, investigators became suspicious when Williamson's clothes matched the description of a man who had ran from a nearby deadly hit and run crash. 
Just after midnight Wednesday, police say Williamson was speeding north on Jim Miller Road when he lost control. Williamson's purple Chevy Tahoe struck a curb, rolled across the intersection, and collided with a white Toyota Corolla sitting at the red light, killing a woman behind the wheel. That woman, 42-year-old Maria Cervantes Guerrero. Something we weren't expecting at all. Her niece tells Fox 4, Guerrero lives just around the corner from the crash. What kind of person would do that to an innocent person who didn't deserve that? It was just coming home from work another day. Witnesses told police Williamson hopped out of his Tahoe and immediately took off dressed in a brown jacket, blue jeans, and a white shirt. Witnesses also said Williamson was bleeding from his head. Five hours later, police say a 911 call came in from the Fox gas station off Lake June Road, less than three miles away from the crash scene. Williamson told dispatch he had been robbed of his vehicle and was bleeding. Once officers arrived, they realized he fit the description from witnesses of the crash. Also, officers noticed Williamson wasn't wearing any shoes. Police say this was consistent with a rubber boot that was found in the Tahoe wedged under the driver's side dash. Williamson was arrested and charged with collision involving death. Strong, independent, loving and caring. I miss her so much. She was like a second mom to a lot of us. Williamson does have misdemeanor warrants out of Rockwall, according to Rockwall Police. Now, we asked Dallas Police if there will be any charges added or if the charge is upgraded, but they could not disclose that information right now. That suspect, again, is here at the Dallas County Jail. His bond is set at 50000 Arlington police are looking for a group of people who beat a 51-year-old man to death at an apartment complex. Police don't have a motive behind the killing, but the victim's family tells us that he was just trying to drive a friend home from work when that attack happened. Fox 4's Rebecca Butcher is live in Arlington with the story. Rebecca. Yeah, Heather, a close friend says that the victim was beaten unrecognizably. His family says they just want justice. Family is left heartbroken after police say their loved one was beaten to death in the parking lot of an Arlington apartment complex. Arlington police say about 1230 Friday morning they were called to the Water Dance Apartments on Blue Water Drive about several people fighting. They say they found the victim now identified by the Tarrant County Medical Examiner as 51 year old Frank Kwasnika, the third unresponsive with blunt force trauma to his head. He was rushed to the hospital where he died. Kwasnika's daughter told Fox for off camera, her father drove to the apartments that night to drop off a co worker. Arlington police say they believe two vehicles pulled up next to him in the parking lot. Three people got out and started yelling at Kwasnika. They chased him and began hitting him with two large objects. Kwasnika's daughter says she knew something was wrong when her dad didn't come home from work and didn't show up for work the next day. He was humble and he was chill to himself. Kwasnika lived in a Grand Prairie neighborhood about 20 minutes from the apartment complex. A neighbor who spoke with us didn't want to show his face or use his name since the killers are still on the loose. He says he regularly talked with Kwasnika and will be missed. He was friends with everybody. Kwasnika's family shared a statement Tuesday saying in part, my daddy Frank was one of a kind, the best daddy anybody could ever ask for. He didn't deserve this. We loved him dearly. He would have been 52 years old tomorrow. If anybody has any more information to finding who did this, please come forward. Arlington police say they don't know a motive for the attack, including whether the killers were trying to rob Kwasnika. And they don't know if Kwasnika knew any of his attackers. Frank is going to be missed by... Uh, me and my family. And police haven't made any arrests so far. They also don't have any detailed descriptions of the suspect or in the car that they drove off in. If you have any information that can help, you're urged to contact police.